Hi, I'm Angie with Burns Boots, and for this lesson, I'm going to teach you how to put cording inside of a boot top. What cording does is it adds a little dimension to your patterns. So for example, it will be a raised portion of your, your pattern. So this boot top right here has it around the edge of the pattern, and that's the pattern I'm going to demonstrate today. So to get started, I've got my stitch pattern, I've got my boot top, and I've got a liner for the back. So I'm going to flip my top leather so the back side is facing up to me. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use rubber cement and I'm going to cover that back, the rough outside in this case, with glue. So this glue is getting placed here so that it will hold our cording on to our leather as we piece these pieces together and then start to sew it. And this pattern has two rows of cording, so I'm going, I'm just going to cover the entire boot, the back of the top. If your project only has a little portion of cording, just glue where your cording is going to sit. You don't need to cover the entire boot top. So I'm going to let this dry for just a minute until it's not tacky anymore. Once your rubber cement dries, take your stitch pattern and you're going to lay it on your boot, get it all centered up, and you're going to powder your pattern on backwards. And this is so we know where to place our cording at. And for the cording, the perfect size cording that worked for this project is actually butcher's twine. And I'm pretty sure you can find it about everywhere. You can go to your local grocery store, you can go to Amazon, wherever. It's available about anywhere. And any heavier size thread will work for this. But you want to make sure it's, it's pretty thick. So now I've got my powder on to my glue, and this is on the reverse side of my top. I'm just going to take my, my cording here, and I'm just going to measure how much I need for this. And then I'm going to cut it off. And once you get your cording cut to size, now I'm going to cover the cording in the rubber cement also, so it'll stick to the boot the back of the boot. And I'm going to use a slick surface just so I can wipe my glue off easier when I'm finished. It, should make, it makes for easier cleanup. And like I said, we're using rubber cement. And this is just to hold our cording in place while we are sewing. I'm going to get that covered up. Okay, so I've got my cording glued. Now I'm going to take it, pull it apart, and I am going to start on the corner of my pattern. And if you can see on the pattern, there's two lines. I'm going to go in between those lines with my cording. So for this class, I'm just going to show you how to do the cording on this this pattern. It's a little more complex. Um, and we will have a pattern available. So I'm on my second row of cording now. And I'm doing the same process I did with the first row. There's the two lines you can see right here. I'm just going in the middle of those and I'm going to go all the way around and meet back here in the corner. And as I'm going, so I'm making sure that my cording is fairly tight when I pull it and I'm twisting it. This, the butcher's twine has a little, it's kind of a loose, loose braid. Um, so I'm just kind of twisting that up just to tighten up the, the, the thread a little bit. And then once you get to your corner, just kind of pinch that 
to make it a tight corner so it's not going off out of our lines. So we just kind of made a point there. Now we've got our cording placed on the back side of our boot top. So there's the front. This is the back. We glued it, powdered it, and now we've placed our cording there. So the next step we're going to do is add our liner to the back. So I've got a piece pre-cut here. So I'm just going to get it lined up over my, my top. And I'm going to take my same rubber cement and I'm going to fold the top down. I'm going to work with the first half, the top half. Being careful not to move the cording we just placed there, but I want my liner to stick. So I'm just going to go carefully across the top of it. Now I'm going to work to the bottom half of my boot top, doing the same thing, being careful not to move my, my cording out of those lines. All right, so now I've got my liner glued on. I've kind of pressed it down to get out any bubbles. Now I'm going to flip it over to the front side. So you can kind of see our cording raised up there, but now we want to really push it down. You want to take something with a smooth curved edge. Um, for example, you could use the end of a Sharpie. I've got a stylus here that has a curved end, so I'm not using the point, I'm using the end of it or you could even use a glass slicker. Just something with a curved, smooth edge. Just make sure that it doesn't have any rough points on it that will scratch your leather. Um, but you can use that edge to kind of push it down to really define where that cording is. And this is where we're gonna stitch later on, is along that edge right there that we're pushing down. So you can use a Sharpie, I'm going to use the back side of the stylus, so this will probably be too sharp, so I'm just going to flip it over and that could work. So whatever you have in your shop or right there next to you that is, is smooth and curved, and our cording is glued down in there, so it shouldn't move on you when you press that leather up against it. So we just want to get the leather pressed down around that and then we're going to powder our pattern back on it so we can see where we're actually going to be sewing. So we're kind of just getting like that air bubble out of there. And you would want to make sure you're doing this from the front side. If you do it from the back, you're going to have the dimension on the back side of the boot and flatten out the front. So just make sure that when you're doing this, step that you're on the front side of your boot, the boot that you're trying to add the dimension to. All right, so I've went around all my edges. We're gonna place our pattern back over the top here. I'm going to take my baby powder now and I'm just going to powder my pattern and this is going to place it onto that top piece of leather. Okay, so now we've got our stitch pattern ready. So those lines that we use to place our cording in between should line up with that cording that we can see through the top. So that's where we're going to stitch it. Here's a couple things you want to make sure that you're aware of. When you're stitching, you need to make sure that your wheel on your machine is sitting along your cording and not on top of it. If you stitch with your wheel on top of it, it's gonna push it to the back of your project and the dimension won't be on the front. Um, another thing that goes along with that, when you're creating your pattern for this, for any project, any of the boot tops that you're going to add your cording into, 
You need to make sure that you have enough room for your wheel to keep sitting flat. So don't go too intricate on it. Keep it so that your wheel can move around that cording. I'm going to start up here in the corner. I'm going to place my wheel right on the edge and I'm going to just use the hand wheel to put my needle down where I want it to start. Now we're going to sew right along the edge and we want to stay on that line. So I'm going to keep just following this line around, keeping my wheel on the flat side of the cording. So really what we're going to do is we're going to sandwich our cording in between these stitch lines. Okay, so we finished our first row. So the outside edge of our pattern, I'm just gonna pull my threads to the back. Okay, so now I'm going to start sewing the second row and I need to start on the opposite side in order to keep my will off of my cording. So, I'm going to start over here this time and go the opposite direction. My other cording is right here. My wheel is in between those. It's not sitting on top of it. So just like the first row, we're just gonna follow that line, kind of just following the dotted line all the way around. And we're sandwiching that cording in between the two. So we're going right up against the edge of the cording. So if you use a thinner cording, your string or your, your lines will be narrower. If you use a heavier cording, your lines can be wider apart. It just depends on how much dimension you're looking for, what style you're going for. But for this project, we're using the butcher's twine. All right, so now we're ready to move on to our second cording in the center. Now I'm gonna start on the opposite corner as I did last time. That way my wheel's on the flat. I'm gonna start up here in the corner and work my way around. And if you get to a spot that the cording isn't sitting right into your, between your lines, you can take something with a soft, it has to be a smooth, kind of a flatter surface, um, and kind of force that cording back into place. Then you're probably going to have to re-powder your pattern after you do that, but you'll want to get that cording in between the lines. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna work my way around one more time. So now I'm on my final inside row. And notice I'm starting on the opposite side again because I need to be inside on the opposite. You know, I need to stay on the flat. All right, so we've got our cording sewn in now. You know, in an actual boot top, you would trim everything. Um, you could add stitching in between the cording. You could add stitching in the middle. Yeah, notice the dimension it adds. And then here's the back. So the back stays nice and flat. We got the cording to pop on the front. And that's how you add cording to your project to add that little extra dimension to your projects. And for more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel.